just to make sure that everybody has an understanding of this is, on page 60, right? this is on page 60 in your homework. So if you're a little bit got stuck on this one, what you're going to want to look at is remember we're trying to complete the square. What do, or we're trying to solve by completing the square. So when solving by completing the square, ladies and gentlemen, our member, our main objective is to create a perfect square trinomial. So again, to do that, what I need to do is first, let's kind of isolate our terms that are going to help us create the perfect square trinomial. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 8 to the other side. x squared plus 6x equals negative 8. All right? Now, on the top of your homework, you guys worked on creating perfect squares. We worked on creating that. Remember it said find the value of c that creates the perfect square? That's exactly what you're going to do here on the left side of the equation. So right now I have a quadratic and a linear term. Bless you. I need to find the constant term that will create this to be a perfect square. So to do that, I take b divided by 2 and square it. So in this case, I have 6 divided by 2 squared. Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So now... 9 is the value that makes a perfect square. So I have x squared plus 6x plus 9. That is now a perfect square. Huh? Yep. Equals negative 8. But remember, an equation is a, an equation is a statement of equality. That means the left side is always equal to the right side. So I did this b divided by 2 to find the value that makes this a perfect square, and I added it to the left side. Just like when you're solving one-step equations, if you add to the left side, you have to make sure you add to the right side. Okay. So now I created a perfect square. So I need to say, well, what is this perfect square then? I created a perfect square trinomial. What is the perfect square? Well, what you can do is you can always take whatever b divided by 2 is, and that's actually going to be part of your perfect square. So if I was to rewrite this, I can factor this back out into x plus 3 times x plus 3 equals 1. But if we want to go one step further to write it as a perfect square, which is x plus 3 squared equals 1. And the reason why we want to do that is because now I've gone from two variables, one being squared, one being linear, to now one variable that's linear. Now all I need to do to solve for this is I just use my inverse operations, which is to take the square root on both sides. So I have x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 1, which is 1. Subtract 3 on both sides. x equals negative 3 plus or minus 1. So therefore, you can write this out separately if you like to. x equals negative 3 plus 1, and x equals negative 3 minus 1. Negative 3 plus 1, x equals negative 2, x equals negative 4. Would we be wrong if we just subtract x plus 3 plus plus or minus square Yeah, because you can simplify that. Yeah, you can go further than that. All right? Okay, so that was the easier one of the two. Um, I'll go through 